All right, so I left off on what I thought might be my final keyframe. So then I pulled them into gifmaker.me and I set it at 350 milliseconds, which is a good default for me. It's just a tiny bit slower than three frames per second. Add a 100% pixels to, to be repeated infinitely. I say create GIF animation and then I say download the GIF. It goes to my downloads folder and then I can open it in a browser to test it. So I'm gonna open it in Safari and I'm looking specifically for how it transitions to the beginning. And so it feels a little bit like a jump cut right there. So I think one more panel will help. But then it's also showing me that he freezes up and then immediately thaws. And so that's not as satisfying as maybe it could be. So we're gonna play with this story a little bit after we've built our keyframes. And sometimes you need to build more in between somewhere else. And sometimes you can just play with what you already have just in, in uh, frame editing, like an editor would do for, for a movie studio. Okay, so, Instead of it being the final keyframe number nine, this is going to be 8B. And then I think I just need one more. And then we'll test it again. So I go to Photo P. I move on from here. I want to brighten it up just a little bit more. So I'm going to take this down halfway. I'm going to take the clouds. down almost all the way. And the character, I have this character turned on. I'm gonna turn off the shadow and I'm gonna leap back to this character and this shadow. Uh, maybe this one and this one. So now I am reusing assets. So I was here, now I'm going to here. And eventually I want it to be there. So that's a good in between of, with assets already created. And then the ice, I'm going to take down halfway on all of these so that they can be turned off at the beginning. So it's finally melting around the feet. And then the clouds, let's take that, or that sun, let's take that down halfway. So this will be the transition setting to reset back to the beginning. First I save it as a PSD, then I export it as a JPEG. And this is keyframe nine. I don't want to mistake it for my animation. So that says GIF at the end. So that's an animation file. But this is my keyframe. Which matches up to this one. It's a jump, but hopefully not. Hopefully it will be smooth. So let's test it out. I go to gifmaker.me. I could just add the new keyframe here. Say upload image and then just add the last one. I will add it on to the bottom there. Keeps all my settings. And then I can say download. 
Actually, I think I need to say, because I added one, I think I have to say create GIF. Wait for it to process it and then download it. There we go. So I might have multiples in my downloads now. Yeah. So I'm going to want the one with little one there. Once it finishes. And now I can test it by opening it in Safari or in any web browser. Yeah, so that that is pretty seamless. But now I have to wonder, okay, I've got all of my keyframes and it tells the story exactly like my sketch. But it kind of treats all the timing the same. And I think what I would like is for it to stay a little bit longer on where the the creature is in the sun and then when the creature is frozen solid. So I'm going to show you how you can do that without having to create any more frames because you already have the, the keyframes created. Now we just get to play with them. So if I know I want more of these frames or of this frame, or if I know I want more space between this and this in my animation, then what I can do is simply add them in, right? So if I want to extend more time with these, I'll just show you the really basic way. I'm just going to add these two frames again, just like I added my last frame on. They're going to come in at the end, but then I can move them. And what I want to do is kind of toggle between these. It'll be a little rough, but it might show me where I want to build more keyframes as well. Okay, so by doing that, when it starts, you see there's a little bit more time before it starts to get really cold. And I can do the same thing with the frozen. I'm just adding frames here. So let's see, where is he most frozen? Probably six and seven. And again, this isn't trying to be high-end special effects animation. This is just an introduction to it, having fun with it. So if I add six and seven in again, They come in at the end, move them up. Huh. I, think I moved them up too far. <laughs> And you can play with the order here and see it in the animation test. What is going on? I got things a little out of order somehow. It's just like rearranging panels in a comic book. OK, 
Let's see how that works. All right, so what I did is I lengthened the time in the sun and then the time frozen solid. You can see it in the little preview. It's going to be a little bit of a back and forth looking stuff. But then that's a nice test to see if there are new keyframes or new in-betweens I want to make. So let's download this new test. And let's see. So I'm going to open them both in Safari and put them side by side. So this was the old one, just running through all the keyframes I made individually. And then this is the new one where I just added oops, some keyframes in. They're not new, I just extended some of them and toggled between them. And I guess it's a little disorienting to look at them both side by side. So let's just do one. So this is the new one. Oh, maybe that's the old one, because that seems to go really fluidly. There we go. Yeah, this one's the new one. So he stays frozen a little bit longer before he thaws. But you see it's a little bit jittery and the ice goes back and forth so it just shows me okay yeah there's something to that that i want but i need to create those keyframes and they're going to be really simple they're going to be really really simple so what i do is i go back to my photoshop file my photo p file and what i want to do is create a moment I'm going to build my first keyframe again. It just had my base layer, and that's why we had all these different duplicates made. Without any ice, without anything. All right. So that was my first frame. I'm going to slowly transition to the next frame. And instead of moving it that much, I'm just going to move it a little bit more. Or in between those two. So move that much. I'm just going to very subtly. Do puppet warp. Just the tiny bit, tiniest bit of movement. Move the shadow just a little bit. And not actually even change the lighting. Yep, and I'm going to call this keyframe 1B, because now I, I've decided I want to add a little bit more time between number 1 and 2. So to extend time in your story, 